Hey, what's up guys? Joel Adams with Iridesium and this video marks the beginning of a brand new beginner's course for Blender 2.8. Blender 2.8 is a pretty amazing piece of software and uh, for anybody who's just getting started with 3D or people who uh, need to be shown around again, uh, who are new to Blender 2.8, who came from 2.79, this, this course should be for you. So uh, let's jump right in and get started. So when you first load up Blender, you should get a splash screen, just like this. You can load up various types of files. Here you can load recent files. Anyways, to get off of the splash screen, just go ahead and click off of it. You can click the splash screen or you can just click off to the side, whatever. Um, to orbit around the viewport, you're going to click and hold the middle mouse button. If you don't have a mouse with a middle mouse button, you can go to Edit, Preferences, and uh, Input. And then under Input, you've got Emulate 3-Button Mouse. I really suggest using a 3-Button Mouse as you're going to also zoom with the scroll wheel. And then to Pan, it's Shift and then Middle Mouse Button. So to go over that one more time, Orbiting is holding down the Middle Mouse Button and then uh, Dragging. Zooming is just scrolling with the middle mouse wheel and then panning is holding down shift and middle mouse button You're going to notice you're orbiting around the center of the screen So if you use shift and middle mouse button to move your cube off to the side You're orbiting around an area right about here. It's right in the center of the screen It's going to be pretty tricky at first orbiting around the viewport but you'll get the hang of it. Um, the next thing you might notice in the viewport is this little navigation gizmo up here at the top. You can actually click it and drag it and this will allow you to orbit around the viewport as well. I have no idea why you'd use that but um, it's there. Next is zooming. This little icon, the uh, little spyglass with a plus in the middle is going to allow you to zoom in and out, click and drag. This one is move the view which is just panning. Um, so click and drag again and then next you've got your camera so if you actually click on this button it's going to take you into the camera view you are now looking at your scene through your camera um, that is this thing right here that doesn't look anything like a camera at all but anyways it is the camera and if you click on it you'll be seeing uh, what your camera is seeing for now that's not going to be super useful it's going to be useful when we get into rendering um, but we'll do that later. So this right here is perspective or orthographic view. If you click it, it's going to remove all the perspective from your scene. Um, so no matter how far something is away, it's going to be the same size as something that's millimeters away from your lens. So if I were to duplicate this cube, you can duplicate a cube by hitting Shift D and then uh, you automatically moving it just right click to cancel that and then select your move gizmo here and then just move it back don't worry we'll go over all of this again I'm just using this as a uh, example so now if you look at your cube which is far away we know it's far away um, it's the same size as the one in the foreground that's because there's no perspective you can click this again to turn it off and now you'll see your cube uh, like you know, you should with, I guess, 35 millimeter lens or 32. I have no idea. Um, anyways, you'll see it with perspective. Just go file, new, general to reload your startup file. And let's just say you're orbiting around your viewport. You make a beautiful model and uh, then you accidentally lose your view. So you just zoom way out and then you, you just pan really, really far away and orbiting around you'll see your cursor flashing into the screen every now and then but you can't zoom into it there is a really easy solution for this and I wish I had known it way back when I started the solution is just hitting the home key on your keyboard hit the home key and that will center you back on your scene uh, then you can you know flip yourself over if you're upside down and uh, get back to work this was a serious problem for me I mean it seems like like a weird tip but Back when I first started, I would lose my scene so often that it was ridiculous. I would spend all this time modeling a beautiful model. I would just be duplicating things and, and scaling them, and then I would lose my scene, and I wouldn't be able to get back, so I would just start over. I would 
I would delete that file and start over. And that's just how I did it. And it was really sad and really uh, hilarious, I guess, at the same time. So I don't want you to have that same problem. If you lose your scene, hit the home key. That is the easiest way to return um, back to your scene. I'm going to load in a new file and go over some of this real quick. Uh, there's a lot of settings here, so I'm going to leave most of them these four icons are how you're going to view your object in your viewport. So you've got solid view, which is the way we're viewing it right now. Then you've got wireframe, which will view uh, the geometry of your model, all the wires. And uh, then you've got look dev, which is like preview render, and then you've got render. For now, before we get into rendering, we're just going to be using solid and wireframe mostly. So that's really basically it as far as navigation in the viewport. I'm just going to quickly point out that these are your tools. Um, this is your selection tool, cursor, uh, that's essentially an origin point of your entire scene where your all your geometry is going to be added in and uh, anyways. This is your move, your rotate, your scale, and all of your transform tools in one. Uh, so you can click on these and this will give you the various tools to move your objects around the scene. We are going to go over all of this again in the next video. So uh, you notice there's this orange line around the cube. This is indicating that your cube is selected. So if you then left click on the camera, you're going to notice it turns orange and then left click on the light, it also turns orange. Uh, that's just indicating what object is selected. So if your light was selected and then you use the transform tool right here, you would be able to edit your light. Um, you can't see it affecting the scene because we're not rendered. If you turn on this shading mode right here, then you'll see it affecting the scene. One last thing I'm going to leave you with in case you uh, wanted to um, mess around in between videos is duplicating. I guess maybe you already know this. Shift D duplicates an object. So if I select this cube and hit Shift D, it's going to duplicate the object. I can right click to um, just snap it back to where it was. Select my um, move tool and then begin editing it. Uh, so if, if I were to just get some of these tools, um, say that, something like this, you can see it's quite easy. Duplicate it with Shift D, move it down, selection tool again, to get a um, fairly nice looking Minecraft character. So, uh, something like that. Probably getting the proportions all screwed up. But anyways, maybe, maybe this would be a good project for your next, uh, you know, in between videos. Yeah, pretty nice. And then you could just use the rotate tool to um, begin posing your character. In the next tutorial, we're going to be covering how to edit objects in object mode. So uh, I guess I will see you there. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. This is Iridesium.